Hello, everyone, and welcome to this WAC livecast uh, about making the case for a network operations center. Uh, we're so glad to have you here. This is the first in a two-part series. We have this one today, and then we have another one, I'm checking my notes, on December 15th, where we're going to talk about taking that and going even further. Hopefully, you signed up for both. If you're here, you're in the chat, and let me see if I can get my orientation right. Is the chat over here? There's the chat over there. I can't remember. There's a chat on one side of this window, and we're happy that you're <laughs> going to be here with us. Uh, so I am Kevin Sparenberg. Uh, you may know me from such things as, I don't know, FWAC, where I'm the community evangelist. You may have seen me recently at, <clears throat> at the SolarWinds user group, SWUG. You may have seen me at the SolarWinds user group in Phoenix, London, Singapore, or Austin, Texas. Any of those are fine. But I also want to introduce Mr. Howard Williams. Howard, tell us about yourself. Well, uh, guys, for those of you that uh, – first of all, I'd like to say hello to all my knocker friends out there, the guys that are out, they're doing it on, on a daily basis. So Howard Williams, Jr., about 25 years of experience, been around knock just a little bit, you know, so I'm familiar <laughs> with them. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm glad to be here at Solar Winds. I've always been a customer, but, guys, I'm on board now, and now I'll be able to provide that feedback to you. That's enough about me, Kevin. All right. <laughs> All right. I mean, this 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 discussion isn't really about you. It really isn't about me, but it is kind yeah. of about both of our pasts because we were both customers. Yes. And that means we had to implement the SolarWinds solutions in, I had to implement it in two places, but I'm sure you've implemented it in at least two, possibly more. And getting to the truth of it can be tough. And especially everyone nowadays, uh, I remember someone speaking to me at the recent swag and said, hey, <clears throat> now that people aren't actually in the office, even our remote people or even our IT staff, our management for all the IT staff, even the help desk, all these people, they're not really in what we traditionally think of as a knock. That doesn't matter. You can still build a knock-like view. In fact, this one that we're showing right now is a very simple one that I would run. This shows my alerts, shows streaming telemetry of some of my logs, shows my, you know, overall system health. And then, of course, it also has THWACK there in the corner because, well, I will promote THWACK all day long. So for those not aware, Howard, how would you describe a NOC? Well, I, I look at a NOC as, as, as being uh, the center point for, for, for all IT teams, right? We're an extension, guys. We're just an extension to, to the teams. They're the subject matter experts, and we provide NOC services to those internal and external customers. The uh, IT teams happen to be I, I, IT customers, but um, those services are really, really uh, important to our companies, right, our organization. So, uh, and we'll talk about a little bit about the values, how we show value, Kevin. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's start with actually going to the past a little bit. This is the okay. most recent, if you're watching it live, of the Thwack Livecast series. If you want to recap, we have Improving Network Tactics. We started earlier this year, IT Journey to Monitoring Glory, where we went over literally the basics about how monitoring works, uh, including pretty things, which is kind of something that you may want to kind of make a note of and go back and watch uh, as you're thinking about building your NOC. We talked about some automation, uh, and then we talked about observability and the three phases. And then also in part of that knock is also service requests. So we also talked about how to automate your way beyond simple incident management. This is routing, automations, integrations, all the things had uh, David Russell talk with us there. It was amazing. But for today, we're going to really discuss some stuff. And it's fairly simple. You know, you need to have this discussion with your executive leadership. You know, whether that happens to be just IT management or infrastructure management, you need to know who to talk to to get, kind of get people on board. You need to know where to find resources to make it good. Now, resources in here, well, yes, it does mean time. And it may mean money if you've got to, like, add new things. But it doesn't mean necessarily computer resources. It means people resources. Uh, how to build partnerships and understanding necessary feedback loops. So, all right, Howard. Why does a company even need a knock? Well, uh, basically, uh, I always started off by uh, we we have uh, uh, engineers that they work around the clock in most places, right? 
and uh, uh, at, at some point, at some point, they're going to get burnout, right? So we can we can go in and le- lend out our services and give back that time to those engineers to be engineers to work on projects, right? And so a lot of time is spent on monitoring, alert handling. The guys are are jack of all trades. And they never get the project work done, Kevin. So that's one of the mm-hmm. big, uh, uh, I think, uh, additions that we bring we bring to uh, the company. Anak yeah. does. And I think, yeah, and I think the difficulty here is your your organization or company always has the same goals. You know, good performance, reduce outages, save money where possible. And I think the difficulty comes in that uh, you and I actually talked about this at Swag, and it's actually part of one of my keynotes where. We've specialized ourselves into silos, which is great because that means that network engineer knows everything and, and anything about BGP or class mapping or CBQOS or whatever. And systems engineer don't care. So mm-hmm. it's almost like they speak a separate language. I always look at the knock as a way to kind of bring this kind of tower of Babel information that happens with IT because, I mean, You've had to run into this where people like the vert team cares about the V motions and the other ones care about the IOPS and this other team cares about. Through, I mean, you know, you know, the laundry list of terms and right. they keep changing. So like prioritizing and building a view for this is it's a dance. I mean, and maybe you need more than one. You know, we're, we keep thinking that knock means a thing. A knock is a place. A knock is a service. Knock is not necessarily a view or a dashboard. It can be sliced and diced any number of ways. Yeah, you're correct, and I, and I think you know when when we start off, you know, again, a lot of uh, uh, it's just depending on your on the organization. And you spoke to the executive, you know, having that that buy from the executive. But again, we have to keep this in mind. You want to crawl. You want to walk and run. You don't want to just jump into this and then have a don't have a roadmap on where you're going, Kevin. But you're correct, though. Uh, the the silos are there. The knock usually is 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 a means and a way to to knock down those silos. But we have to work together. We are mm-hmm. one voice, one team, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and that's the way IT always should be. And you know, when yeah. people think knock views, they think either you know, a, a dashboard or a, a list of services or a list of nodes or interface traffic or a map. They'll think about any number of these things. And all of those things are good, but you also don't build this in a silo because honestly, Howard, you and I had this discussion a long time ago <laughs> when I, not long after came on, I was like, there's nothing more frustrating than building what you think, the person, the admin, the network engineer, whomever, and think it's awesome, it's perfect, it's mwah, chef kiss. But then you let other people see it and they're like, where is this? Where is that? And it's like, it's a dance. This is more of a long-term conversation yes. because we've already given you all the yes. tools to build the stuff. Um, I think we need to talk about ownership because you mentioned that there are multiple teams typically involved. But Correct. we need to understand who owns monitoring and who owns devices. And that can be a little, like, what, is, what has been your experience, Howard? Well, it's, it's, it gets really tricky. All right, let's be honest. It usually, the, the team that purchased the application, right? So it, it lands in, the, in most times in the hands of the network team. But it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't mean that other, <laughs> that the other teams can't use. It's all about, you know, you know, defining the ownership. And to your point, Kevin, we do look at it in different ways. You know, it it, it could be application, it could be device, it's whatever that team feels that, that's really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then when you actually have to go out and start asking these questions, like who owns a thing can be <laughs> also be a difficult, I mean, it can be a difficult one because yes. let's think about, let's think that Howard, you are a web developer. I don't think you are, but you're a web developer <laughs> and you own a specific app on a right. web server that's part of a cluster that is running on this hypervisor that is back <laughs> to the storage. 
who owns that app? Who owns the stack? Who owns the layers? And that's why we need to get out of this idea of specific silos. That's, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm tired of it because it does help you specialize, but I'm tired of people thinking it's the only part of the IT job. Uh, I totally agree. So much more. Yeah, no, I, to I totally agree with you. You know, it, it's, again, I always speak to it's, it. We're just one team working together. If we want to restore service, the best way to restore service is one pane of glass. Our SolarWinds 2s provide that. We have it. The one-stop shop. I'm getting excited, Kevin. Go ahead. I'll let you go. I, I know. I know. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. No, this is the kind of stuff we want because uh, Howard and I are bringing something to the conversation that uh, it's not a nice thing to say, but you may not get with a lot of other vendors is because we were customers for a while. So right. we knew what this platforms could do. We knew where the limitations were. We knew how to get around those limitations, either from talking to the support team or asking questions on WAC. We knew how to make the best examples for what we needed. And uh, Howard, uh, let me ask you this way. When you worked at other companies, did you come in as the NOC manager or the whatever the title was called, or did you come in like in the network level when you were using the SolarWinds tools? It it depends. It, it depends. I, I've come in at, at, at all of the areas, but I started out. You know, I have a little background in network engineering, right? But what uh, a lot of back in the day, I'm going to date myself again. You came in on the network team, and then it evolved into the knock. You start bringing in. Uh, well, I mean, it different... is network operations center. So. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so, uh, but. Uh, yeah, it, it, it just evolved. You know, I, I, I've been around the old mainframe and I've seen the, the, you know, the operations center, but, you know, network centric, everybody thought it was just only network only. So, but now today it's a new knock. It's a, it went mm -hmm. with all platforms. So we're leveraging yeah. and we're monitoring and alerting all platforms. Yeah, but I think it, part it, of that. Yeah, go ahead. Go no, ahead. No, 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 you got it. You got I was going to say the evolution of the knock. I think back when mm -hmm. we were, quote, young and working <laughs> from the network side of the house, we had an idea of, hey, we're going to watch the network. And when servers were, you know, even if they were multi homed with two NICs, they were physical servers, you know, physical copper, right. actual wires moving across. The line. So, the the holistic network only view was probably enough oh but, absolutely n but now the knock needs to evolve maybe we should come up yeah. with a better industry term but your your operation center your it operation center your observability center your whatever you want to call it however you brand it that is something that is beyond that because we introduced hypervisors, which obscure and obfuscate where servers live. We introduced, you know, things like containerization. And I don't mean yes. solar winds, I mean the industry. Uh, and then right. cloud just, you know, cloud just takes that grenade, just throws it over the walls. Like, good luck knowing where this thing is. You may know that it's in US <laughs> East, but that's as much as you got. So if we go back to our early days, now my mm -hmm. team was using a very poor piece of software, which I will not name, when I started <laughs> and running the solar solution, I don't like to slam people. Uh, but the first thing I had to ask after generally understanding how the solar wind solutions work is how are you monitoring stuff today? What are you monitoring today? And that's, that's basically what I went. There was literally a guy, my uh, buddy of mine, John, who sat next to me and he ran the other one. And I said, Hey John, what are you watching with this? And he gave me the list. I was like, what don't you like? And when you run into a problem, what do you do? Right. And how are how how are your notifications? How are the you know how are the views? How are the this? How are the you know does it have decent reporting? And he gave me a laundry list. Yeah. And that became my work list. That became a project. Thank God, because I <laughs> devoted a little bit of my time to it. Well, you were talking about projects, and the problem we see a lot of people do with this, and. I am 100% guilty of this because I got it installed. What's the first thing that happens? Prompts you for network discovery. Right. When you finish right. installing. So, so I'm sure you did a network discovery, at least a small yes. one. Yes, yes, And Then you added all the things. And well, you well, have I'll, data, I'll, but Yeah, 
I've always also done discovery and went, whoa, that was too that was too large of a subnet. So mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it it there, it it's critical. Yeah. Yeah. There is and but for me it was like we were having, I think at the time we were having packet loss on a WAN link, mm -hmm. you know, and the mm -hmm. only way we could see what it was was like actually SSHing onto it and then up up enter, up, you know, show in stats, up up enter, up up enter, up up enter, and just watch the counters right. go. Right. And so that was right. my priority. Get every WAN interface in. There were 47 of them on the primary side, 47 on the secondary. <laughs> so so I ended up going, I, I, I think, like, although I was monitoring metrics from the bottom up, mm -hmm. I should have been thinking about the problems from the top down. And we had uh, we had Robert Clark, one of our MVPs, uh, Bob Marley on THWAC. He was nice enough to come to Phoenix and present. Were you able to watch a session? He, he did a very yeah. cowboy theme session. It was yeah, fun. Yeah, I met him. Bob is awesome, man. Yeah, we talked yeah. a lot. We hung out a little bit. He, yeah, he inspired this kind of thought process because I didn't realize mm -hmm. I needed to quantify it in this way. It was okay. something that uh, I thought about, but I was so tied in the idea of getting the numbers in place that I didn't care so much about like, like the, the magic KPI that actually means the thing. And that's that's the trick here. You know, if you go bottom up, millions of metrics, no problem. Great. But then you're doing a lot of extra work to kind of weed that down. Top right. down, if you start with the important services or applications or what have you, a little yes. easier. So have you run into this internally? Because bottoms up is great. You get lots of metrics, but top down is more about the people that work with your systems. Yes, absolutely. And one of the things that when I came on board here, it was it was it was very instrumental that I once I started to partner with teams, I wanted to know what those critical services were. Right. What are the services that will will that will actually you know bring down that application? So those are the services that we want to start with first, Kevin. So those critical identifying those critical services and then putting a little priority around them. Right. Mm -hmm. So then you're talking about the SLAs and 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 how we're going to handle the you know the the priorities when we have the service interruptions, you know, our escalation process, things of that nature. But you're correct; uh, it it it's it's changed. We have to look at it a totally different way. Mm -hmm. So you came in, and uh, I I want to paraphrase real fast. You were brought in, okay. uh -huh. Solar Winds, and yes. you were given the mandate to build a full NOC application availability, mm -hmm. SolarWinds Observability Center, whatever we mm -hmm. want to call it. You were, you were tasked with building that and you were told the very specific resources you could use. What were they? Because I think people will find it interesting. So here's the caveat on all this, Kevin. I yeah. didn't know that my CIO was going to tell me that none of these resources will have a clue on any of our products. So my team, when I brought them on, when I onboarded those guys, they have mm -hmm. they had no idea about our, our products. So what I That's wanted good. to do, yeah, yeah. So what I wanted to do is we wanted to come in and bring up and set the knot, uh, at just like a new customer was. I wanted to feel mm -hmm. the experience that our customers. You know, Phil, as they as they build and 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 start to build and add the application and products, but one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to 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 partner with with, with the sales team. I wanted to know the product teams. I wanted to know my stakeholders. It's important that you mm -hmm. have the stakeholders. You get to know those stakeholders, and then you start to to ease in. But here's what was different: my CIO, Chris Day, spent. 30 days. I was with the big guy for 30 days. He had to plan. Nice. He walked me through. He had that approval. That yeah. message that the that the new SWAC knock, we branded to SWAC, uh, was was coming on board and it just it made it easy for me. So mm -hmm. that's that that was a great start for me, right? Top yeah. up, you but know. But in those 30 days, level. yeah. Mm -hmm. Those 30 days, you got, you know, I know you got introduced to a bunch of people. I know that we yes, got introduced yes, probably in yes. that time or just a couple yes. of days later. Mm -hmm. But the mandate that you handed down to your team was you can only use resources available <laughs> to the rest of the world. In other words, you can't go to Joe Developer 
no. and ask them how to do this. You no. can't go, you know, to Sally Webmaster and ask. You have to use the resources available to all of our customers. So, although you might get some like behind the scenes peaks because you do work for Solar Winds, you're still using every resource available to every single one of our customers, which is amazing. It, it's it's awesome. You know what it did, Kevin? Yeah. It forced me to 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 go in and go out there and find the that the that resources. Where's everything stored at? Why should I reinvent the wheel? I I shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I wanted to change. So I had to step back and I had to think about it. Man, they're treating me just like a regular customer. I have all these resources. Like I have. What is thing. this? Have yeah, I been set yeah. up? <laughs> but you no, have, you, but it's critical. <laughs> also, and for anyone watching or listening, whether you're live or watching this from the archive, this was a mandate from the company. It said, you know what? Yes. We need to know whether we're providing sufficient resources. And mm -hmm. I know after you came on, like the number of classes we put in the virtual academy went yes. up. I, I know you were like super happy to finally meet Cheryl. I think it was in Austin when she came in. She's done a lot of those classes. Kevin, it was like meeting my solo win movie stars. I was like, that's that guy. That's Kevin. Okay, that's Cheryl. You know, it's like, all right, should I really say something to Cheryl? Do I ask her for an autograph? It was it was hilarious. <laughs> uh, Cheryl's good people. So yes. the Virtual Academy, honestly, was yes. when I was a customer many, many years ago, Virtual Academy was kind of a thing, but it's mm -hmm. much more fleshed out now. If you're not signing, if you're a customer, you should totally have access to you go to your customer portal and go from there. Please, please do that. Um, yes. So, all right. So CIO says your game. Right. Uh, you're and you're ready to kick this in gear. You bring up your team, you onboard them on the way these things work. Mm -hmm. Then you got to reach out to the teams that you are actually helping. How do you actually have that conversation? Because it's it can be a dance, I think. Yeah, I, I think I, I kind of layered it. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to meet with all the managers first and then have a presentation and, and talk about, you know, my goals, my roadmap. And things is my knock services, things that I could do. The main thing was is how I would show value to their teams, right? So those are the things that you want to you want to think about in an introduction, and then be be yourself. Ask questions. Let them let them talk. Let them tell you exactly what their needs are. If you just be a good listener, they'll give you ideas on where you need to start. Mm -hmm. And they'll also give you tips on how they fix things. So that is correct. maybe you can take that work off of them by being one of those partners. I, I think the long story short on this is you can try as much mm -hmm. as you want to build a knock from scratch yourself, but you, you, you just can't do it alone. You need yeah. to ask for volunteers. You need to ask for people. And sometimes that means working with teams you haven't worked with before. I mean, if you're in your situation, you were that net new, true. so you didn't know anybody. But if you yeah. are internally promoted to be this, you may not know who the no. management of infrastructure is or who the DBAs are or who the reporting structures. And there's a little bit of work on this, but, uh, you know, stakeholders, volunteers, whatever mm -hmm. you want. Honestly, I, I would almost deputize uh, a friend of mine at my last company, a guy named Tony, and there's another guy named Mike. Mike did uh, Vert and Storage and Tony did DB databases. And I basically deputized the two of them and I said, I need you not to be clued in on everything in my world, right. clue in everything in your world, but I need you to tell me when there's a way I can help you. Right, right. And that basically made them allies in this. And yes. that was, that's a great way to build that team. I mean, if yeah. you got someone who can be part of your side, you know, you, you pull a sysadmin or two, you pull a network engineer or two, you pull all these people and they're, you know, Stakeholders is a perfectly fine word, yeah. but I always think of them as an extended team. They're part of the yes, larger monitoring team. Yes, they yeah. are. Yes, they are. I mean, you're, you're nailing it, Kevin. It, it's, it's exactly back in the old days where it wasn't really considered a knock, but that's what you did. You leveraged mm -hmm. the resources. That, ah, that's Jim from that's Jim from Systems. Hey, Jim. Hey, tell me about a little bit about what you do. Hey, Mike from Network Side, right? You know, so you just, you know, you, you you tapped in and then you went to that that manager. I would go to that manager and say, 
could you dedicate that resource to me for about four hours? I'd like to know a little bit more about how you guys handle, you know, what you do in your world, right? Let me into your world so we can be a team. I'm starting this new monitoring team. Let's let's be a, how do I get, you know, how do, how do we become a, you know, a team, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Singular, yeah. not the A team. Although right. it can be similar. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. And I and I think we need to be a little humble with this because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I think a lot of knock people, I think a lot of people that use our solutions are IT generalists. They know a lot yes. about or they know a, let me rephrase that. They know a little bit. It can be a lot, but they know it about a plethora of things. They know it about apps and storage and maybe some coding and this. But there are people on your teams at your mm -hmm. organizations that are the SMEs. They're the subject matter experts. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. don't think you know better than them. That you are is. not there to tell them what's important to them. They're there to tell you what's important to them because they're the ones that keep the business operating. Ultimately, you're going to kind of help with that, but you've got to rely on that. Kevin, you are, you, man. Are you looking out? Are you reading my my, my book here? <laughs> my no, notes? no. Do you have a, Do you have a book? It's not on our shelf yet. <laughs> Kevin, one of the I, I think the number one mistakes that that uh, a, a a knock manager, uh, uh, someone trying to build a knock, establish knock, is going and start telling the subject matter expect the 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 SMEs ex what they should have, how they should operate. Don't do it, guys. Don't do it. Mm -mm. You're correct. There Kevin. may be, yeah, there, there may be a couple of things, minimals. You may up, down, yeah. yeah. Interface right. driving, yeah. CPU yes. memory, fine. Got it. Yeah. That's fine for everybody. Yeah. But everything beyond that, and I mean everything, mm -hmm. you got to remember that as, as a monitoring engineer, as an observability engineer, as, you know, the, the SolarWinds admin at your organization, although you're providing a service, mm -hmm. your job is actually to make sure the other services keep working. And to let people know when they're acting funny. Um, and sometimes, I, I remember this vividly, I remember having to go to talk to someone. So I came from legal and we used something called a document management system, which basically did versioning, blah, 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 uh, for legal docs. And I said, can someone please explain to me how this works? And uh, talking to a guy at work and then uh, his supervisor came in and she said, this is how it works. It's ABC. And she gave me like three server names. And I'm like, can you tell me actually how it works? And she right. literally grabbed a sheet of paper from the printer, grabbed a pencil, and drew it out for me. And you know what? That was enough to start. Because at least in legal, the document management system was like the very important part. Uh, you know, it's, it, what do they say? Uh, law firms run on paper. Uh, it's mm -hmm. really true. And making sure that was there. So that was just an example of a service. And when these things are complex like that and you've got things moving in from outside APIs or you've got pushes from webhooks or you've got all these, even having a simple drawing and understanding the moving parts is enough to get started. But it's not the end goal. That is correct. And, and, and again, uh, it's just the small things, right? So just what is your roadmap? What do you intend to do? If you will just be a good listener, just listen. And then work and and you know and and give and make it clear that it's this is your opinion. You tell me how your application works. You tell me what's critical to it. Let's work together because if we do, uh, we, we're gonna when when issues arrive, we will we will be able to restore service pretty quickly because now I have an understanding of the big picture of how this application works. So it's it, mm -hmm. it's important. You're correct. Just jot it down. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I ended up bringing in her uh, and him, but uh, from uh -huh. the document management team, I brought in Barb and Will, really nice people, brought them in and said, I need you to tell me how these work. And, I, and we basically iterated on it. And then they became part of my kind of cross-team mm -hmm. collaboration because I was mm -hmm. technically a network engineer, but this was that thing about deputizing or nominating, or hopefully it's not the case, but if you have to go to their manager, someone make it voluntold to be a part of this, <laughs> hopefully you can convince them otherwise. But yeah, but what that does is it leads to uh, what I have found at least is by me having that conversation with them, 
they were more likely to reciprocate. And right. through me or whatever the monitoring environment is, they were able then to talk cleaner to the storage people. So we mm -hmm. ended up building partnerships between teams Gotcha. because they were all part of this, you know, this knock project. They were part of this monitoring project. And, you know, we didn't, have, well, I'm not going to lie. One team, we did have to get mandate from executives, but everyone else <laughs> kind of did it on their own. Yeah. But it's getting through there because let's be serious. Silos. Number one problem with silo is people, especially network people. I am 100% guilty of this is I say, it's not my fault. And that is mean time to innocence. That is, it's not my fault. Take that case, kick it somewhere else. <laughs> but you correct. What does that not do? Doesn't fix the problem. Right. You know, whatever issues there is still there. And that's what you're there to build. Mean time to resolution. And right. you, you talk about SLAs. What, when you're actually having these conversations with teams that own systems, and when I say systems, I mean like mm -hmm. larger platform things, not like mm -hmm. a like small like what things are you getting in here to make sure you don't fall into this trap? Well, the the thing is, is I want to make sure uh, that they first of all know what that critical uh, services are. A lot mm -hmm. of teams might say. They may think they know. So I have to break it down. I was like, okay, basically just tell me uh, if this service is, if you lose this service, does this, does this take your application down? No. Next service. So sometimes it's just walking them through having a, just a meeting. And that might be a weekly cadence meeting that will eventually turn into a biweekly, then a monthly cadence, right? Where mm -hmm. you discuss and you look at and you pinpoint and you try to, to uh, make sure that they are understanding what the type of service that you will pr be providing as a knock and how we can get these services up and, and monitor, right? And then we'll talk about service level uh, agreements, right? We'll create some service level definitions around yeah. how we, you know, how we'll escalate in that portion. That 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 comes later, but let's yeah. just and to talk who? about yeah. Oh, wow. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And can we take remediation actions on your behalf beforehand? You know, if it's a, a mm -hmm. dead node in a cluster or behind a, a load balancer, if, if we're not sending HTTP traffic, you, you mind if I just reboot that for you? Well, no, that's what I was going to do. Cool. Thanks. Write that down. Put that in my work. You know, what, what you're describing is SOP remediation. And that's mm -hmm. what we go after. That's what we go after. Yeah. And the way you get that is by kind of taking the time, mm -hmm. scheduling, and you're right. First time should be just a handshake hallway introduction. Be like, hey, yes. I'm such and such. I'm working with this. Uh, can I sch schedule some time? But eventually you get to a point where you have to have meetings about like onboarding and offboarding because mm -hmm. let's, hopefully, please, I hope, I hope people are still retiring old servers when they're like, I don't know, <laughs> five years out of warrant. You've seen it. We both have where that one server right. is still there and it's like, running i don't know server 2003 but it runs this one thing and you're like no <laughs> but hopefully hopefully if that's the case and it's critical you should be monitoring it but you know offboarding and onboarding of elements because there are times that there is still care and feeding involved what mm -hmm. is the definition of a critical service and this is something that realistically from a business mindset affects dollars there you go that, I mean, that's the bottom line yeah, it's, it's <laughs> dollars. If, if, if yes. your employees can't do a thing that is eventually going to make you money because just an internal IT system, that is a critical system. Whether it's a mm -hmm. SEV 1, SEV 2, or a tier 1, 2, mm -hmm. however you classify, that's up to you. Mm -hmm. But definitions. Uh, you already mentioned alerting. 100%. We had a weekly triage. I do not lie. We had a weekly triage for <laughs> almost six months. And I said, bring your alerts that are honestly bring the ones that are horrible mm -hmm. bring me the ones you hate and we will work together and figure out how to do it and it started off as like an hour-long meeting and everyone from the various you know any of the recipients were invited and then it went down uh, dashboards uh, thankfully the modern versions of the solar platform uh, the legacy orion products have mm -hmm. the modern dashboards now mm -hmm which means you don't need to be like 
have view customization pseudo admin level to actually build them, which is amazing. Right. Right. And for me, that is like, I would almost build a generic starter one and make like five copies of it and be like, here, network team, put on here what you think is important. Here, systems team, cloud team, put your stuff on here. And then have like repeating training sessions with them. Or, I don't know, probably the better thing, send them to the virtual academy so they understand how that works. Yeah. So one of the key things that, that I wanted you to do is when you're creating the dashboard, the, the dashboard is for conversation. Right. It's yes. for them to determine what goes on it, not for you. Uh, you just basically just give it to them and let them determine. Oh, because what, what's going to happen, Kevin? They're going to say, what's missing? Right. Well, you need to add this. You need to add this. Well, why do we need to add this? Why do we need that? Ah, so mm -hmm. that's important to you. So they still mm -hmm. they, they start to talk in those book. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So those are the things that they deem critical. And that's important. Yeah. And part of that discussion, and I'm, I'm just going to close out the slide here, is reporting and mapping. Because mm -hmm. maps for me, network engineer background, were always mm -hmm. something that followed copper or mm -hmm. fiber. Th those mm -hmm. were, as far as I was concerned, those were the only maps that I cared about. Right. That's not really the case. Because applications will talk to 15 different applications behind a load balancer in a set middle tier. But that is a different thing. You don't care as much about the copper. Right. You care about the actual transmit. So actually having these and forgive me for saying this and I apologize to everyone, giving teams homework to like build their first map, even if it's something right. super simple. Right. Same thing for dashboard. I mean, we just got this guy like, look, you're allowed to build that. And if you love a widget that I built on my modern dashboard, you are 100 percent able to steal that. Like Picasso said, stealing is the highest form of flattery. You can steal my widget and then customize it if you want. But don't just copy paste. Take time and think about it. Right, right. I, I think one of the benefits with our products is having, I call them that starter kit, right? We have those templates out there. Don't reinvent the world. Just start simple. Like you say, go in and look what's happening behind. Ah, so I can use SQL. I can use Swickle. So what is Swickle? So start to learn and look at the look at the tools that you have that you can use to get the basic dashboards. And you're right. Using the, the modern dashboards, they were it was very easy to use. And then I was I was like, why make this complicated? This is a quick win for me. So mm -hmm. I wanted the quick win. Yeah. And honestly, the the number of people who have shared really compelling dashboards on mm -hmm. FWAC that you can just download and import is mm -hmm. honestly, I'm very, very impressed. I think it's, mm -hmm. I, I think we're up like 60 or 70. I'm, I don't know, I haven't looked at the number in a while, but I know there's like four that I basically recommend to everybody. There's like a, a new version of the alerts one that gives nice pie chart slices. And there's a couple other ones that I just love. But I, I, I will tell you the biggest problem I had when I was coming mm -hmm. in and becoming the monitoring engineer at my company. And that was, I wanted to monitor everything. Oh, uh, uh. I know. I, I, I had aspirations. I was young and I was dumb. Forgive me. But I, wa <laughs> I, I did. But here's, here's the trade-off. Like everyone says, uh, yeah, it's cool if you want to monitor everything. Like from a very high level. Do you want to alert on everything? Well, mm. absolutely not. So anyone... Anyone who's hearing this, anyone who ever hears this, realize that monitoring is not the same as alerting. One is a feature of the other. They are not the same thing. Uh, and for me, it was bad. I literally put in every piece of network gear we had. And why was it bad? Because I had so much extra data in my <laughs> knock that basically for me, if a knock has to scroll, like if you're actually going to do proper knock on a wall kind of thing, if you got to scroll, you lost because I mean you need to have a mouse plugged in. <laughs> Seriously, so don't do that. Um, right. But I put too right. much in, and I think what you need to do is if when we talk about this, like if you're talking about a service, and mm -hmm. I'm going to pick on databases because let's be let's be 100% transparent here. Data defines what your business does and how your mm -hmm. is pro uh, is profitable and what your people work with internally. I think you need to pick a good milestone. Absolutely. And that milestone may just be, all right, so I know connections to this database are important. I know that's hosted on 
this cluster, mm -hmm. which is made up of this and this server, which happen to be hypervised, thankfully, on different hosts. Right. But they have that they have that share, so they're both connected to the same VLAN or LUN on the back side. And this is so that's the stuff you get from your SMEs. So mm -hmm. you if you bring in a thing, if it's literally just I keep picking on internet when I talk about things because everyone knows what it is. So if you pick internet, you pick the web servers, the databases, the web applications, the mm -hmm. transactions that go to those, the basically once you get that entire stack mm -hmm. in and monitoring with no alerting, then it's time because now you have full visibility. Now it's time to circle back and have a discussion about what kind of alerts do you need on this? Mm -hmm. What kind of reports do you need on this? Do you need dashboards? Do you need help building any of these things? Because if I got time, I will totally help you, but I don't want to do the work for you. Right. So maybe go to Thwack, find some nice ones that are done. There's reports, alerts, and dashboards already there. Watch an academy class. And does this mean you have more alerts in your environment? Quite possibly. Does it mean you have more reports? Quite possibly. Does it mean you have more dashboards? Quite possibly. Does right. it mean your knock is more efficient? or all of your other teams? Yeah, for that one, I'm gonna go with a yes. So <laughs> so I, I'm curious, what was the first uh -huh. system that you guys brought in? So you, you, you installed the platform, mm -hmm. you ran your first network discovery, you said, mm -hmm. that's cool, but I need to watch a thing, like a business service. And it doesn't have to be a critical one because obviously you were new and your team was new. What was the first thing you guys put in? What, what I, we, we wanted to leverage uh, uh, NPM, right? The, the the network, and 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 just basically learned about the tools that the network teams were using, right? So mm -hmm. their day to day understanding uh, what's critical to them, what they were monitoring, uh, how they escalate. Uh, I wanted to know exactly what did they what what was done to remediate, right? So we would stir step. So during those those meetings, those meetings, we would talk about some of the things that they wish they, that they could hand off. <laughs> you know? yeah. Wow, hand off. That sounds like something that that the knock could do. That was important. Yeah. So just the, the the you know we talked about endpoints, things that were critical to, to the to the network. I wanted to stay uh, along uh, on the things that were important to them and and make sure that they knew that I had an understanding what was deemed important and what did I need to start with first. Yeah. And part of that is directives you, the business gives you, most of it should be right. realistically. Right. Some of it is directives, you know, IT management gives to you, CIO, CTO, right. EIEIO. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> and some of it is personal or, mm -hmm. you know, with your monitoring team where you're like, I want to be able to think we mm -hmm. should be like, I feel like we should be able to do this. And by us kind of kicking the tires in like something that's never going to alert and we are not going to go crazy on it. We can see if we can basically build this in a way that is good enough that we can then like repeat that over and over again. Uh, right. This is why I will say it till I'm blue in the face, get a lab. Yeah. And You've, and yeah. I don't mean you need like a full production lab, but you probably have a dev or a staging. If, if your company is a reasonable size, you probably have a dev or a staging environment. Totally get yourself a lab cop, get yourself a lab license, install it in that and just monitor stuff in staging or pre-prod or test and just turn off all the alerts. In fact, anyone who has installed our products, turn off all the out-of-box alerts. Sorry, company doesn't like me saying that because it does technically show that the products work and they do work and it's great but they're, they're not tuned for your environment. A uh, friend of mine always used to say, the alerts that come out of the box always need to be salted to taste. And I couldn't agree more. Reports too, realistically. Uh, so yeah, all right. Uh, we're going to go to questions, uh, but while we have people here, if we can make sure the slides up on the screen, we will put all these links in the resources, but I wanna call out the Customer Success Center. Howard and I spend way too much time there. Uh, yes. <laughs> including the virtual academy, harassing Cheryl, harassing in the next way. Uh, uh, read your documentation, your release notes. You will hear this a hundred times, but the big thing there is when, excuse me, when you run into a question, 
mm-hmm. and you can't find it there, ask on Thwack. You're not going to be the only person who has run into this thing. In fact, I'd be shocked unless you were literally buying the V next of a piece of hardware. Someone else in our community has had to deal with this, either the exact same thing or close enough to be able to give you some guidance. So join the discussion forums. Uh, Howard mentioned the content exchange. Uh, I think in our internal one, which we're not showing right now, but stay tuned for the next one. We're going to be showing some stuff there. Uh, we, I think we, we put in the alert one. Yeah, I know we put in the alert one, the alert dashboard. Uh, and I think we put in uh, the NCM one, the network config one, before it actually mm-hmm. became part of product. So now we don't need that one. But it was still a nice view. Uh, so for the content exchange, it's thwack.com slash CX. Uh, that's Charlie X-Ray. And then you can look for alerts, dashboards, custom queries, right. um, reports, all of these things. Someone else has probably had this problem. We can't ship, the company, SolarWinds, cannot ship every report that would be right. useful for every person. So that's right. why Thwack is there. Uh, obviously go through the Tech Tip Archive. I know, Howard, you said you used to watch when they were still called Tuesday Tips. You, yes. you, you watched a couple <laughs> of those be like, how do I yes. do a thing? That's how I do a thing. And they're like three to five minutes. And then we also have our video archive of uh, pretty much almost every video we've ever done. And all of them are educational. Some of them are entertaining, (laughs) but you're always gonna get something out of it. Uh, But that's great. Uh, Let me see if we got any questions come up. Uh, Let's see. Kevin, I wanna mention one thing about- uh, Please, go right ahead. uh, Getting off to a good start. Guys, just, just remember, what you don't want to do is you you don't want to start trying to reinvent the wheel because what you're going to find is you're going to be spending a lot of time spinning in that wheel. So uh, leverage leverage the customer success. It's a great place to get a great start from. It gives you ideas on where you should where you should go, what you should do next. More importantly, and ideals. I live on that, guys. I, I live on there. I look for you. I, I know that you're going to do something fancy and nice that I can show off and I can claim the fame on it. But mm-hmm. it, it's there. It's there. So yeah. leverage, the, leverage the resources that you, you see on your screen. Yeah. All right, Kevin. You can, yeah, if there's constant, yeah. if there's people there that are, you know, are mm-hmm. constantly piping out good content, you can follow them. You can yes. subscribe to yes. pretty much any space on Thwack and get notifications, whether you yes. want them email or not. I don't prefer email. I prefer the little live thing that like pops out and shows up at the top. That's a me preference. If you like email, by all means, I don't feel like most days I don't need more email, but I'll subscribe <laughs> to stuff like, you know, the, the galleries for uh, right. the content exchange galleries. Like when people put a new dashboard on, I get a little pop out and says, hey, someone published a new dashboard. So I will go and look at it and be like, that's cool. I want that one. And then, you know, I tweak it for my own uses. Uh, we did get a couple questions. Let's see. Um, trying not to fall out of frame too much, but I'm not going to succeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so Adam, one of the guys I know, uh, says he actually has his critical infrastructure of his dots. Like literally has a landing page with just dots. Like, sorry, Adam. Uh, email, document services, printers, web, you know, whatever. Active Directory or authentication. And then when you click on those dots, they take you to a map. Oh and wow! And then when you click on that map, it takes you to you know whatever you know. And hopefully he's doing a little bit of nesting. Maps. <laughs> he is, and that's the and, and. But we had this discussion. This is where you build. You right. you have to build for the exec view Mm -hmm. like those are your six or seven services and then maybe each of those links go to separate dashboards right not impossible to do and those links go to separate dashboards and those dashboards go to possibly other dashboards and other dashboards and finally down to like node or app details how many layers you put in there it's fine the important part is when you try to bring one of these systems on and i had this problem i had it with exchange Yes, I'm dating myself. Nobody uses Exchange on Prem anymore. <laughs> oh, I had it. Don't laugh at me, Howard. Um, but when I was doing it, I had to know all of the layers. Like I knew the server names and I knew the services, but I didn't know the vert. I didn't know the storage. I didn't know, you know, what type of lens. I, I didn't know that. And I had to know all that stuff to build the top level. Like this is the Exchange view. Mm-hmm. And once I had that, then I realized this knock view this dashboard 
has too much information. Uh, so, uh, okay. So you copy it. Yeah. The new one you call the summary and you just change your filters or you group things a little different and roll them up. So this is, this is the thinking of the top down view and especially in an environment where these things are going to change uh, because execs like dots. Mm. I mean, honestly, if, if they could just traffic lights, come on. <laughs> Seriously, yes. if they could walk by, yeah. and I, I know people in the past who have actually had a little, like, they did something super clever, but they got like a little Raspberry Pi and like one of those uh, USB powered LED strips. And they like put a border around the door. And when things were, when critical systems were, red then it would change the light strip color so oh, wow. like anyone walking by knows do not disturb <laughs> them they're dealing with critical issues right now i mean this is all part of thinking about this and getting out of the idea of metrics because metrics are good mm -hmm. logs are good traces are good all of these things are great but they don't tell the full story right and that's when you need to get other people involved all right let me see who else we got um Widgets. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah. Um, Adam also called out the fact that perf stack is amazing. Uh, one Whoa. of the. Yeah. I, I, honestly, I think more people should be using perf stack and net path. The, if you do those two things, that is. You, you will be amazed at what you get in there. Um, perf stack, what's great about them is you can build it, you can share it, you can save it. You can put it right on a dashboard. You can put it on both a classic and a modern dashboard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're gorgeous. They show exactly what you think they're going to show. And then uh, what was the other one? NetPath. We introduced NetPath years ago. And the fact that people don't use it more, all right, I'm going to be completely honest. It kind of irritates me. You heard mm -hmm. me talk about it. Everyone thinks it's just for networks. And it's um, not for monitoring just web pages or web servers or it's for so much. If it has a TCP port, you can use right. NetPath. And then you put those probes all over your infrastructure. If you want to be sneaky, this is a conversation we had at Swag. If you want to be sneaky, you put one of those agents on your CEO's laptop. <laughs> <laughs> or whoever your constant screamer is who says, I can't get the things. And you just don't alert on it, but you keep it there for record keeping purposes. And basically every time they get on, it updates the information. You're like, yeah, you were on the really horrible hotel Wi-Fi that had horrible drops. And that's why you couldn't, you know, live stream, blah, right. blah, blah, or you couldn't watch that, whatever it happens to be. But right. those connections to your critical services is, that's, that's what we live and breathe with now. Uh, we did have a fun comment, though. Uh, so having an iron fish bowl is something I always wanted to try, but was never brave enough. <laughs> uh, the weather map is the most common item uh, that that this person has seen on all knocks and socks. And I agree. A good a good map, legit like geography and weather map, right. especially for remote office. I mean, yeah. uh, I don't know right now if the Charlotte location is having torrential downpour or if Salt Lake is in the middle of like five feet of snow. But if all of a sudden a bunch of stuff went off there, I'd like to know. No, that Kevin, that 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 ideal. I mean, it's it's ideal because, to your point, there are things and events that are happening. It just doesn't have to be, uh, you know, weather related. That can happen, and you know, you sh you know, you should you should know about it. You know, but especially if it's af affecting. Uh, maybe a company or one of your your remote sites somewhere else, and they're down. And you didn't know yeah. there was a hurricane that hit, right? Or they were yeah. <laughs> some some event. We, we occurred, can't be right? everywhere all at once. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. what the software is for. The software can be everywhere at once. We can. And even yeah. if you have follow the sun employees, because we've got them around the yeah. globe, yeah, you want to make sure everyone's seeing the right. same information. And uh, we've got the tools here to build it. But I think I think everyone is concerned that there is like one perfect knock view, and that's never going to be the case no no never never it, it, it's going to be specific you know to to each one of the things that i do guys is uh i create different dashboard views from across platforms 
the you know the course that way that they're only looking at their their information but i also have a view that they can see the overall view of everybody you just click and point you know but it makes it feel personable to those those teams and they can concentrate on their environment and they find out more details about the vital the, their statistics that you know that that's important to them right and it helps you to gauge where they are and what they're doing so when i have meetings with them kevin we we bring up their view i'm not looking at only their view we're talking to their dashboard just some ideas guys golf clap for you uh, yeah uh because and i will make this recommendation and people will love or hate me i would give people your team's most access read only mm -hmm. of course to mm -hmm. almost everything you are monitoring mm -hmm. with a couple caveats. Network configurations really should only be for the network right. team right. that actually knows the logins. Uh, server configurations may be only for the application owners themselves. And NetFlow is honestly too complex for some people to understand the nuance of. Uh, so I hid those three portions uh, mm -hmm. and then gave my help desk full access and they had in, in the help desk space at the company I came from, there was an 80 inch, I think this is how old, I think it was a plasma. And I think they had to reinforce the wall. There was an 80 inch plasma on that side that showed all of their ticketing information, like how many calls are in queue, how many emails are waiting outstanding, you know, what's our close ratio. And the other one was the knock view, incredibly high level. And because then they could just glance and be right. like, we're having a problem in Boston. I will add you to the existing case once I find it. It's probably not restricted to you. We will give you an update when we're done. Instead of them working that particular issue for 5, 10, 15 minutes, blowing their SLAs while there was literally nothing they could do. The help desk is almost always going to be the face of your organization. Keep mm -hmm. them informed. But do not inundate them with too much information. That's why NetFlow, Network Configs, system configs, those two are security related, but NetFlow honestly is, is too tough for most people, most non-network right. people to understand the fact that it's not the same as bandwidth. Uh, so <laughs> it is. Um, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, that's all I had. I think we're coming up on how we're close. We're, we're doing really well. This has been a fantastic conversation. Howard, any last thoughts before we go ahead and wrap this down? Yeah, I would, would, would tell, tell our, our partners out there, especially the knockers you know guys just just be patient i know it could become it, it could be very overwhelming uh it's overwhelming to me you know i i'm learning just like you are and i i want to continue this conversation guys because i i'm you i've been i've been you on the outside looking in i'm on the inside inside looking out now i want to help you have our products you have the best products let, let's do it. Let's work it together. I mean, Kevin and I are excited. We, we, we come from the same background and we want to make a difference. You're praying for those products. We want you to be using those products. Yeah. And I mean, guys, you know, stay strong and, and know it's going to take time. If you don't remember anything else, it's a, my methodology is crawl first, walk a little bit, and then you'll run again. That's all I have, Kevin. So cool. So much more a marathon than a sprint. Uh, yes. Howard, uh, I want to thank you live uh, for being sure. part of the SWUGS in the States this year, and hopefully we can mm -hmm. get you to the Solar Energy User Groups in 2023. Uh, we are hoping to have announcements about them shortly. You can always check our pages. There will be a community announcement, so please make sure you are registered for our community announcements. Uh, last but not least, we have the live cast part two of this, where Howard and I will talk again and maybe show a little bit more. Uh, as long as we get legal approval uh, on December 15th, same time. So you can just come back to thwack.com slash livecast and see that. I will be at AWS reInvent November 28th through December 2nd. So go ahead and come up and say hello to me. Uh, we will give you a tour of the new products and how everything is working. Or if you just have a question, love it. Uh, I will also be at Gartner IOCSC December 6th through 8th. So if you happen to be at that event, by all means, come find the booth if I happen to not be there. Tell them you saw me on Thwack, and we will see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks again, Howard. Thanks, Thanks guys.